people chasing yield, which is what a normal person's going to do, right? If you're making 1% here and you can make five over here, well, hell, that's free money. Might as well go get it. Um, what I do worry is that this is one of those like pre-tremors before a bigger earthquake. Like the Fed has raised rates so quickly in this situation, we started to see things break in the banking system. At some point, something in the economy is going to break and we are going to go into a recession. And my biggest fear is that the Fed, because, in because inflation is still elevated, they're not going to be able to come to the rescue like they did in 2018, like they did in 2009 with easy money policy. And so where does that put us? Does that put us in a long bear market? Does it put us in a long term recession where literally we could be in a recession for two years, three years before we're able to mm -hmm. get out of it? And the question then is, how bad do balance sheet looks for look for stocks? Like for me, I look at a stock like Apple trading at a forward P.E. of 27. And I, I understand it's a safety hedge right now, but if we get in a recession, how do you justify that price to earnings? I, I can't personally. It's, it's ludicrous. Bitcoin's price broke below its 55-day resistance at $27,000 on May 12th, down 12.3% in 30 days. But more importantly, it decoupled from the S&P 500 index, which is basically flat from 30 days ago and 15% below its all-time high. As the chart indicates, for some reason, Bitcoin investors believe that the favorable macroeconomic trends for risk markets were overshadowed by the increased risk perception of the cryptocurrency sector. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Gareth Soloway shares his analysis of the markets for May. Also, he talks about the banking crisis and the future of crypto and stocks. You know, you see that three banks equaling that amount of deposits, yeah. and that amount of money is is pretty scary uh, in the scheme of things. And again, the question is, and, and this is what my biggest fear is, as you see more. And by the way, I think in the in the mid 90s, there were 14,000 banks in the U.S. There's now 4,000 and obviously. Oh, wow. More I didn't know that. So, so we've already been on this trek where it's less and less banks. And, and I hate to say it, but we're on the pace where eventually you're going to have four or five banks and that'll be the only like bank Canada. in the U.S. And essentially what they become is is government owned, right? I mean, yep. not literally government owned, but the point point to be where they're too big to fail. So the government will always backstop them. And, and that's just the, you know, this is just a, a rotation towards the ultimate outcome that's not a healthy outcome. Where again, the government will backstop them, which means more printing of money, more this and more that. They mess up, you know, and that's and that's yeah, it's just not a good situation. They tried this, by the way, in 08, 09, and it actually was a miserable failure. Um, they yeah. so they banned short selling in the banks, I believe, back then, and it didn't keep the banks from falling. In fact, you could argue that it it actually pushed more selling pressure. And the thing exactly. is, is once you start to manipulate investors that are long don't trust the system anymore either and they'll just start to sell and say you know what if they're manipulating here what's the next step them saying hey i can't sell my shares or i can't do this and, and then before you know it people are like all right then i'm just a hundred percent out this is a play by the politicians because they don't understand the markets they don't st understand psychology of of human behavior and um it's high time they get someone involved that does i think for starters, there's the impending United States government debt ceiling crisis, which, according to U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, could cause an economic and financial catastrophe. The increased risk of default should, in theory, be beneficial for scarce assets as investors seek shelter from a weaker U.S. dollar. The $5.6 trillion commercial real estate market in the U.S. is subject to additional risks due to high interest rates and troubled regional banks. Guggenheim Partners Chief Investment Officer Ann Walsh stated, We're likely going into a real estate recession, but not across the entire real estate market. There is also positive news on the cryptocurrency regulatory front, as the industry gathers additional support against the regulatory efforts of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce filed an amicus brief on May 9th, defending the Coinbase exchange and accusing the SEC of deliberately creating a precarious and uncertain landscape. So number one, crypto's gotten a little bit more popular, so that's drawing in more people to trade. And number two, they cut expenses. And and what we've seen, whether it was Disney, whether it was Meta, um, when these companies cut expenses, investors are actually cheering that by buying yeah. the stock. So I think that's part of it is that in, as we go into a recession, cutting expenses is going to be more and more popular. Um, and so I think that's what you're seeing there. But but at this point, you know, it's a no touch for me. I, I ultimately think if you looked out five or 10 years, Coinbase probably is lower, um, mainly mm -hmm. because 
as competition grows, as regulation comes, the fees they charge are ridiculous, you know, to do a do a buyer and sell. And that that will come down. You know, if you, you go back exactly. to like the late nineties when I was trading, it cost me thirty dollars to buy a stock and thirty dollars to sell right. a stock. Now I basically do it from zero dollar, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So so the longer term will eventually bring those down, which means the, they're going to have to figure out another way to make profit. And that's what it is. I mean, when you see gambling and again, it's not investing, you know, there's no one, no one's getting into Pepe saying, hey, I'm going to hold this because it's going to be the, the best quality coin out there. They're getting in it because they think that they can just sell it to someone else at a higher price. And we're seeing so many meme coins, like everyone on Twitter, what's the next meme? Where, where do I get in? Where do I just throw some money to try to make a thousand percent? not healthy, not good for a market. And show me one bottom of a market historically, whether it's crypto stocks or commodities or anything that has actually showed that type of speculation. You can't find it. There, it's not right. out there. This is the sign of a top, not a bottom. Further fueling investors' hope is the Bitcoin halving expected for April, May 2024 when the miner's incentive per block will be reduced from 6.25 BTC to 3.125 BTC. Addresses holding 1 BTC or more reached 1 million on May 13. In total, a whopping 190,000 whole coiners have been added since February 2022. Despite the recent Bitcoin price weakness, there are enough drivers and potential triggers to sustain a considerable bull run in the upcoming months. Professional traders are aware of the liquidation risks associated with futures contracts, so their preferred investment strategies include options instruments. We, I talked about this for months in advance about the 30,500 level, and again, psychologically, that is like the major, major point of contention here. It was a level where, for me, it was a pivot point whether or not the low was in or not, and so far we haven't broken through it, so the low to me is potentially still not in in crypto. Um, the level why psychologically it's so important, it was the beginning of this mega move up to 65,000. It was the dip lows and then the move up to 69. And then we came in and consolidated before breaking down. So essentially, we've just re reversed or reversed that move. Um, if we zoom into the current price action, you do have some bearish stuff going on here, right? Number one, you still can't take out 30,500. You have a mm -hmm. level here at 27, which I'm watching closely. But you could also make a case that there's a pretty clear... Uh, trend line. I mean, maybe even going back to here, or we can just kind yeah, of slide you that up underneath. There you go. And mm -hmm. that's another concerning thing. So if, right now we haven't broken it. So you got to give it credit for not breaking it yet. But if this takes out to the downside, then that's where trouble really gets started. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, to me, to see so many bulls out there, I, you know, I, I don't know if you're saying that there's potentially new lows to be seen in, in yes. as well. But again, yes, I we am. Are, I would say you and I are probably one of the only people out there. I think there might be one or two else out there talking about that. It's certainly not the common perception. But to me, this is a bear market rally. And look at 2018-19. You had rallies that were percentage-wise bigger than what we've seen here. And we still came Absolutely. down and made new lows or at least touched the same lows out there. So, so I do hope people are careful. Um, I think the government on purpose is not unveiling regulation because they want to unveil their stablecoin, their, their CBDC. It, what concerns me and what I think a black swan could be is if the government unveils the stable coin, the CBDC, where does Tether fall in the mix there? What's the purpose of Tether if we already have something that the government has that's pegged to the U.S. dollar anyways? And so then, I mean, I don't know. If, if all of a sudden Tether's not as useful, does it then create more instability? I, I'm not sure, but I do think investors need to be very careful. So what is your thoughts? Is it a good time to buy Bitcoin? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.